His name is Henry John Duchendorf Jr. John Denver! Oh my God! But we know this famous American singer-songwriter by another name, which just so happens to be the capital of the state we'll be exploring in the episode of Gems Across America. They're talking about West Virginia, but I'm talking about Colorado. All right, let's open this up. Man's best friend helped sniff out this, a gemstone and a whole bunch more. And this golden retriever was such a good boy, he got a whole mine named after him. I have zero idea what that is. Fluorite, gorgeous stone. I've never seen a, look at that, it's like tipped. Fluorite's a super cool stone. It's actually known in the industry for being one that has basically the colors of the rainbow. It's of the cubic crystal system. And if you wanna learn more about the cubic crystal system, Elizabeth and I actually did an episode about it and we had sugar cubes on it. If you wanna check that episode out, click on the link right here. Okay guys, this is a really cool story. So in 2017, a man named Kyle Warrington was hiking with his dog, Astro. And they, they came across a stone and, and long story short, he ended up finding a mine and he had no geology experience. So it was just a super cool example of what happens when you're just like out in the country kicking around. So anyways, uh, when his dog passed away, his golden retriever, they named the mine after his golden retriever, Astro. So there is an Astro mine in Colorado, in Pikes Peak, about 30 miles outside of Colorado Springs. All right, ready for the clue? You might think Sweet Home Alabama is in the South, but this mine is in Colorado and sparkles pink as I got to discover firsthand. Oh my gosh, where are we going? The Sweet Home Mine in Colorado is Rotocrosite. Eek! I love this one. The real queen of this box is this piece right here. I actually had the chance to visit the Rotocrosite Mine. It was right outside of Denver, Colorado. So JTV, we flew into Denver, we drove a little bit to where the mine was. So about two years ago, I actually had the opportunity to visit the Sweet Home Mine in Alma, Colorado. We got to see where the stones are mined. We actually got to see them, how they blast when they're opening a mine. It is known for kind of that like pinkish, reddish, orangish look. It's colored by manganese. I believe the chemical composition is manganese, carbon, and then three molecules of oxygen. Now you don't see a whole lot of this in jewelry because it is so soft. It's normal to see the inclusions and it's about a four on the nose. So that is why you're not gonna see it in jewelry. If you wanna learn more about our Rotocrosite adventure in Alma, Colorado, check out this link here. You'll be able to see all of our adventures in the mine. I think you'll actually be able to see me jumping and running away from the mine when they were blasting it. So fun fact about the Sweet Home Mine, which is another reason I absolutely love it, is that it's basically the most pure Rotocrosite in the world and it's super, super important to the mineral community. And what's really cool about this piece is there's actually pyrite, uh, quartz and rhodochrosite on just the specimen. It's a rarity, which makes it truly golden. Okay, that's golden. Barite, that's what I thought. All right, I have to be careful with this because I know barite is actually super rare. I think Elizabeth said she's only seen like four of them in her career. So barite is found about 80 miles north of Aspen, Colorado. Barite is actually an ore of barium. It's identifiable because of its heavy specific gravity. So it's gonna be a little bit heavier than you would you would think. And actually, allegedly, the name barite comes from the Greek word for heavy, which is baros. So fun fact. <laughs> comes in a variety of colors. It's not very durable, so you're really not gonna see it in jewelry. Next box. Fresh box! There's no reason to be blue when you're looking for this gemstone. Oh, blue barite. This is a really good example of the different colors that we can see in barite. And because barite is not very durable and not found in jewelry, I'm exceptionally surprised to see this as a faceted piece. Okay, next one. Legend has it this gemstone traveled through a rainbow and it must have landed in Colorado. Ah, tourmaline. Not just any type of tourmaline. This I would call watermelon tourmaline because of the pink 
uh, material in the middle surrounded by the green. You can tell it's tourmaline immediately because of the crystal structure, but also it's known the crystals have these like striations on the bottom. Tourmaline was actually once proposed to be a national gemstone of the US. If you want a soothing stone, this one offer offers a tranquil color. Amazonite. Okay, so Amazonite. I'm actually wearing Amazonite jewelry because I love the color. Fun fact. Amazonite was actually named after the Amazon River, even though there are no known occurrences of Amazonite in the Amazon River. Sometimes there's misnomers in the business. A misnomer for Amazonite is Amazon Jade. This is actually not from the Amazon River and it is not Jade. So if you hear that term in the industry, be careful. Amazonite is a type of feldspar. You can't be afraid of heights to get this gem. It came from the highest elevated mine in the contiguous 48 states. Smoky quartz, and I know that because of the crystal structure. Fun fact it's about smoky quartz, it's actually colored by gamma rays, whether naturally or artificially. These stones actually come from Mount Antero in Colorado, which is 13,000 feet above sea level, super high. Fun fact, it is only able to be accessed during the summer months. All right, it's not the gold rush in Colorado, but another metal that sparkles. Silver, duh. AG on the periodic table of elements. It is not a stone, but a metal. It is widely used in jewelry. If you see, if you have a piece of silver jewelry and you see 925 stamped in it, that means 92.5% of it is silver and the rest is an alloy. What's really cool is that the silver mining camp came into prominence in roughly 1889. So I just, I think that shows how long of a history Colorado has had in gemstones and mining. And when you're looking at all these gemstones, they're basically found just in the middle section of the state of Colorado, which I think is so cool because when you look at that middle section, you know, it's, it's not a huge area. It's a decent sized area, but what's really neat is that that area is producing this variety of stones. So the geology must just be out of this world. I don't know what my favorite one is, um, but if I had to pick, I would definitely say the rhodochrosite because I was able to visit the mine. I actually shot an unboxing video on the side of a mine, which is probably peak career experiences. Um, and I just love the color. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Don't forget about our other episodes and gemstones across America. Don't miss out. We've got some awesome stuff coming up in the future. Thanks for watching.